Hi, I'm Marcy Wensang, and I'm a BenQ brand ambassador. And in this video, what I would like to do is give you my thoughts about the brand new SW240 uh, display right here, which is behind me. This is BenQ latest and greatest uh, entry level display that is designed specifically for photographers. But before we do that, what I like to do is give you guys uh, a brief history of the BenQ SW line display that is designed for photographers. So, about four years ago, as a filming of this video, BenQ had released the SW2700 PT. Now, the SW2700 PT is a 27 inch hardware calibrated display designed specifically for photographers. It was their first uh, entry into this hardware calibrated display market, and they have really made a ripple in this market. The price point is absolutely amazing. The panel quality is absolutely great. And they have been making improvement on the display itself. Now, mind you, that was a 27 inch display. However, that is not 4K. So the second BenQ hurrah into the realm of hardware calibrated display for photographers was the SW320. And the SW320 is one of my daily drivers and it's also a beast. It is a 32 inch, well the panel itself is 31 and a half, but the display, you know, overall size is a 32 inch display and it's 4K resolution. So if you want to see your content big and large that will be the display to go for you now because it is a 32 inch 4k and all 32 inch 4k comes with a fairly hefty price on the market it may not be for everyone and that's perfectly okay it just depends on your creative needs and everybody have different needs so what happened then is benq gone out again and they have tried to disrupt the market again and they've been doing it successfully for quite a few years now the third entry into the hardware calibrated display market is their sw271 the sw271 like its very first sibling that was released was a 27 inch hardware calibrate display as well but this time it got updated with a few things so number one it is updated with a 4k panel so now you have a 4k panel display and a smaller footprint than the 32 inch is there a reason why you want to use a 32 well if you're an editor and you want you know the larger size display then 32 inch is definitely for you but overall it is a really great display what's also introduced with the sw271 as well is that they also introduce the what they call infinite edge display so with the sw271 very similar to the sw240 sitting right here and i'll talk about this in a little bit it uh, is also have very thin bezel as you can kind of see here it actually looks really stunning because then you get to be immersed in your photos when you're editing or video editing whatever creative endeavor you're doing you're with that and you're experiencing that firsthand without the bezel and that tends to be the, that is the trend now in the industry is to go with slim bezel. So now for this video, and without further ado, I'd like to share with you the BenQ latest entry into the hardware calibrated display market. And this is the SW240. Now the SW240 is a, you know, it's the kind of like the youngest sibling and it's also the smallest sibling in the SW line of display. It has all the capabilities of the other one. The resolution is obviously a little different because, you know, BenQ did not try to cram in 4K into a 24 inch display, which I have a lot of respect for because I've seen all the other manufacturers try to do that and the text become extremely tiny. It's kind of one of those where you can't really see and the experience is not really that good anymore. So this display itself has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio and the resolution is 1920 by 1200, which is respectable for a 24 inch display. Now, what's really awesome with all the BenQ SW line, this is something that, uh, is, you know, throughout the years I've used them and I have come to respect is the innovation that they put into to the display itself, but also the panel consistency and quality. Now, this panel itself can display 100% sRGB, which is awesome most panel now can display 100% sRGB but what this one can do as well is that it can display 99% Adobe RGB and Adobe RGB if you ever look at a color wedge it's actually a significant larger color space than the sRGB itself so it's really quite awesome like all the SW series display that came before it 
This one also has a 14-bit 3D LUT, 3D lookup table to do color comparison, making sure the color is um, accurate and so forth. So that's really nice. Uh, you would calibrate this using the Palette Master Element software, which is BenQ uh, flagship software that they designed specifically for the SW series of display, which is really nice. If you have seen my other videos or if you have firsthand experience using the BenQ or seen it in store and display and demos, the SW series of display, one of the things that you'll notice that every one that comes before it is comes with two things. First of all, it always comes with a hockey puck to, for you to do the instant color adjustments and profile and so forth. I'm glad to report this display still has it, but it's actually designed a little different, so that's number one. Secondly, it doesn't ship with the, uh, the hood, but what happens to hood, you can just purchase it as an additional accessory. And this is the only one in the SW series line that does not come with the hood. But you're not really missing a lot. It's still a great panel itself. Now, I mentioned in the other SW series that it has a hockey puck. Well, this one forgoes a hockey puck. And what they have done here is they actually have created a color mode hotkey here. So you can press and then you can change and scroll down and change the different preset color mode, Adobe, uh, Adobe RGB, Advanced Black and White Mode, DCI-P3, sRGB, uh, among sort of color spaces, including your calibrated space as well. So they have kind of just gone in and reiterate the, the buttons and the menu a little differently. Now the other thing is the usual BenQ uh, standard thing that comes with their display is that it has a wide color ga gamut, as I, just, as I just mentioned, 99% Adobe RGB. It also has an IPS panel. Now, I mentioned in previous videos that IPS stands for in-plane switching. Essentially, if you use this in a studio setting and you have a lot of people gathering around you, the person standing from the side here and the person standing from the front will be looking at the same picture with the same color consistency and the same brightness consistency without a lot of changes as you move from side to side. And that's something really amazing. Most of the display now are IPS. Not all of them are, but if you want a really good calibrate display for a photographer, IPS is going to be extremely important. Uh, like I said, it has hardware calibration with a 14-bit 3D lookup. Uh, it has a color mode hotkey, and like I said, shading hood is optional. So that's kind of the display in itself. Again, you know, very simple design, very elegant. They have done a really good job, again, with the handling display, the ergonomic. For example, there is like a handle that you can just kind of lift up. They actually have changed the design of the base a little bit too. It makes it a little bit easier for, for um, initial assembly and so forth. So I thought that was really kind of nice. Uh, there's a lot of uh, iteration that, that kind of happens with these display and that's kind of really awesome. So. Anyhow, uh, one of the things I want to kind of highlight in the display, and this is very similar to the other BenQ displays that we have seen in the past, is that it has a color hotkey. In this case, there's no longer a hockey puck. It's just literally a button on the display itself, and it's distinguished by these kind of like three circular dots in here. So you can just press the button again. And you'll go sRGB. We can turn the display into advanced black and white mode, which is awesome. Again, I, I kind of like the advanced black and white mode because if you want to see uh, true black and white and not software render black and white, this is one of the best way to do it. I mean, sometimes in depending on the display you use, when you turn a picture into black and white, sometimes you'll see that kind of green cast. In this case, you really see the true black and white. You can kind of really get an idea of what the picture would look like, and I find that extremely helpful. So these are the, the kind of the three one you can cycle through. This display itself, you know, similar to the SW271, which is a 27 inch 4K display, which is the third generation. This is the fourth gen fourth model, which at least that was a third. Um, they both come with three hardware calibration slot. And I find that really awesome with a three hardware calibration slot because what happened is you can have multiple ways of um, creative creativity in terms of calibrating your display. Now, for most photographers, I recommend calibrating the display to about 80 candela um, because that's about what would match the print. But the nice thing about having a two calibration slot is that you can calibrate one for 80 candela and you can calibrate slot number two for about 120 candela. So if you want it a little bit brighter, you can. And then you can have a third slot. So if you have a laptop and you want to plug it in, you can have a third slot being assigned to your laptop calibration, which is really kind of nice. So the fact that they add three slots for the hardware calibration slot and, and the hardware calibration profile on the display itself is something that I, I really love. 
Now, something that I didn't mention yet is the delta E value to this display. The delta E with all the BenQ SMB line is always going to be under two. And uh, as I mentioned before as well, the delta E value is a variation between color. The average delta E, e is the average between all the colors that that you know is being measured. And you want that value below two. The lower the value, the better the color accuracy of the display. I've, I've been playing around with this monitor for quite a little bit. It's really great. Now, for me, I have an opportunity to play with the 4K displays and I'm using the 4K displays. I love the resolution. I love the on-screen real estate. But like I mentioned before, 4K is not for everyone and that's perfectly okay. Uh, this display itself, it's great for anybody, for any photographer, any creative professional who wants to kind of start out in the hardware calibrated display arena. Wanted to see their color being more accurate and so forth. Don't need the large footprint of the 27 or the 32 inch display. This would be absolutely perfect for that. And like I said too, the price point for this display being a hardware calibrated one is absolutely amazing. It makes it super reasonable for any photographer to go in and purchase a hardware calibrated display. And this is a great entry into that. So anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave in a comment below. And once again, I'm Art Swansing, and it's been great to have you to watch the video. Thank you.